This is the review of calculus chapter one, exam number two. So here we're given a function f of x. It's a rational expression with a polynomial divided by a polynomial. We want to determine all slant and horizontal asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, and or holes that exist. Okay, and then we want to sketch it on this grid right here. All right, so first what we need to do is look at candidates for asymptotes. And let's start where, um, let's look at the candidates for vertical asymptotes and holes. So vertical asymptotes, holes, these are our candidates, right? Okay, and so a candidate basically means is this could be either one, we don't know which one it is. And that's where the denominator is equal to zero. That's just denominator. So that's x cubed minus x is equal to zero. And from that, I can factor out an x, right? That's, so that's x squared minus 1 equals to 0. And x squared minus 1 is just the difference of two squares. So that's x plus 1, x minus 1. And there we have x is equal to 0, or x plus 1 is equal to 0, or x is negative 1, or x minus 1 is equal to 0, or x is equal to positive 1. So these right here are my candidates for vertical asymptotes and holes. So then how do we go on and decide, well, which one is it? Well, that's that's when we actually do polynomial division. And we go ahead and say, well, if I have x cubed minus x, right? We're dividing x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x pi this. And x cubed goes into x cubed one time. So then we go ahead and multiply it out. That's just x cubed minus x. Subtract that. x cubed minus x cubed is 0. 3x squared, well, there's no x squared. Um, 2x minus negative x is plus 3x. x cubed doesn't go into x squared, so this is just plus. And then we have the rational expression, 3x squared plus 3x over x cubed minus x. OK? And don't be too um, too certain yet because these like we're like oh we still have x cubed minus x there in the denominator. Um, we need to simplify this. So this one can be simplified more. Um, so one plus three x squared plus three x divided by x cubed minus x. We can go ahead and factor out a three x in the numerator. So that's plus three x, and then we have x plus 1 over, and we can factor out an x, and we already did that, so we know that it's x plus 1, x minus 1 here, right? These x's cancel out, and this x plus 1 cancels out with that one. So we have that's equal to 1 plus 3 times x, sorry, no more x or anything, just 3 divided by x minus 1, okay? So here's like our blob. This right here, whatever we have, is our horizontal or slant asymptote. So we have horizontal asymptote because it's just 1. There's no slope. Is y is equal to 1. Okay. x minus 1, well, we got rid. So this is still undefined when x minus 1 is equal to 0 or x is equal to 1. This is undefined, right? So our denominator is still um, undefined still 0 when x is 1. So our candidates up here, right? I'm looking here at our candidates. That means x, my, x equals to 1 is our vertical asymptote. And these two then are our holes. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 1. We have a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 1. And we have a hole at x is equal to 0. And another hole at x is equal to negative 1, right? And how do we find the y values? for these? Well, look here at our expression. When x is 0, y is equal to 1 plus 3 over negative 1. So that's just 1 plus negative 3 or negative 2. So that gives us the point 0 comma negative 2. When x is negative 1, we have 1 plus 3 over negative 1 minus 1. So that's 1 plus 3 over negative 2. So that's just negative 1 half. So that gives us the point negative 1, comma, negative 1 half. Okay, so these are what we're looking for in part A. Horizontal asymptote, not a slant, 
asymptote, vertical asymptote, and it has two holes, one, two. So then we go and sketch this. I'm going to start off by sketching my horizontal asymptote is just y is equal to 1. So y here is 1. So I know that this horizontal line, right, is my horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 1. X is equal to 1 is my vertical asymptote. Well, X is 1 here, and I know that it's 1 everywhere here. So that's my vertical asymptote. X is equal to 1. Right, and then finally, I want to put my two holes, 0, comma, negative 2. So 0, comma, negative 2, I'm going to put a hole right there. So open circle, negative 1, comma, negative 1 half, negative 1, comma, negative 1 half right there. And I know um, that since my graph is going to pass by those two holes, it's going to look like this. And it has end behavior that goes as we go x towards negative infinity, we're approaching this line y is equal to 1. As x approaches 1 from the left, we're going for negative infinity. Um, if I plug in 2 into my equation, this just becomes 1 plus 3 over 2 minus 1, or 1 plus 3, which is 4. So I know I'm going to be up here, and I'm going to be going up that way and down this way toward um, the y value of 1 and not past my horizontal asymptote or my vertical asymptote, because those are my end behavior over here, and this is my vertical asymptote. Make sure I put the arrow there. And so that's my graph, um, and I didn't need a calculator to do this problem. So that ends first the review of problem number two from the chapter one exam in calculus.